Welcome to the Learning Revolution Conference online uh, conference uh, today, April um, 24th, 2014. My name is Melba Yildiz, and today's topic um, I uh, choose to talk is uh, called Liberating Ourselves from a Textbook Format, Innovative, Inclusive, Transformative, and discipline, Transdisciplinary Ideas from Teacher Candidates. And thank you for choosing to listen or joining the session this afternoon. Um, I would like to um, um, share with you um, a lot of um, things I gathered from uh, teaching candidates today. And let's uh, find the arrow to go to the next slide. Uh, this um, event is um, uh, and sponsors we need to thank first. Classblog, Blackboard Collaborate, and the Learning Revolution uh, Project. Thank you for their support for making this available. And you, as you can see, um, Little picture at the top. I'm from Kane University in Union, New Jersey. And the topic is again liberating ourselves from a textbook format. And uh, my email address is nalda.yildiz at fullbrightmail.org. And um, I would like to welcome you in some of the languages that um, written here. Xie Xie. Um, welcome. Uh, Ni hao. I'm sorry, she is here, is, um, thank you. Hoshke Adenis, bienvenido. And um, I would like to um, take you to a little journey today with um, myths and misconceptions that my students um, gathered. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, the word critical autonomy. Um, this is a term that I heard um, first time uh, when I was learning media literacy education from Ben Masterman. And this one uh, is something that I'd like my students to have. This is also called critical thinking. It could be called media literacy skills. There are many different names and um, uh, ways you can um, focus on for this topic. So when the students um, bring any educational material to their classroom, they need to, instead of saying, I need to teach the tech facts, uh, they need to be able to uh, teach the critical thinking skills where the students develop their critical autonomy. In order to do that, we have um, three topics that we're going to focus today to, to elaborate some of the myths and misconceptions in K-12 education. We would like to um, look at some of the learning modules and participants, uh, how they respond to the online activities that we had. First, um, just came to my attention a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, there was a YouTube video. I put a screen capture. But you're welcome to watch the clip uh, later. Let me put the link for the YouTube video. This is very interesting because the original video that was posted on the website was uh, buffaloes running on a highway in Yellowstone. Later on, this was uh, reposted with an alert that says Yellowstone buffalo running for their lives. And watching this video, um, also created a lot of um, um, explanations, information, and even came through um, online um, news to my attention, saying um, North America is going to have a big earthquake, and people are uh, uh, need to be aware of this, and they need to escape from the North America, and so on. And later on, I found out this was um, a hoax and uh, scientists debunked the idea. So by looking at this, this is a very recent um, um, issue 
and how it went viral and how everybody um, uh, used the, the knowledge to tell their part of the story, I was alerted to um, discuss in my classroom. And um, because everybody gets one of these emails, right? Sorry, scan very quickly. And in the emails, usually it says, please forward this information to, uh, to your friends and family. Let's get the world a better place. And one of the things I started collecting is this kind of um, information. So my students also start to collect it with me. And we have a huge collection. If you're interested, email it to us. And one of the, um, the poem is called, um, Mom, I um, went to a party. You told me not to drink, Mom, so I had a Sprite instead. I felt proud of myself, Mom, the way you said I would, that I didn't, didn't drink and drive, Mom, though some friends said I should. And this po poem goes on and on. And the original poem apparently appeared on a book uh, for chicken um, soup for soul later on. It was put on to um, a website, a religious website, but the original poem had a word soda in it instead of Sprite. But here uh, you can see the Sprite is added. It could be a product placement. Then this email comes and uh, asks you to forward to all these messages. If you look at the Snopes link, snopes.com is a resource that you can use with your students it allows you to explore um, how this original story comes and um, what is behind the story. So let me get you the link on the chat window so you'll be able to look at look at it yourself. Um, different versions of this um, story. And it's also Urban Legends uh, website that you can check. If I also put a link up for you. Let me get that up too. So these are some of the resources you can easily use with your um, students, family, friends. Um, because I have a colleague constantly, used to constantly uh, forward me information. Oh, did you hear this news? Did you hear that information? And I end up uh, telling her, go look at this link. It's actually a myth. So um, as you can see on the snooze.com page, you will be able to um, find out how this um, uh, petition is created um, with the pictures, created um, different kinds of pictures. And go to the website and we play some music in the background. All right, coming back to um, uh, another um, myth. This is a story. Let me quickly read it to you. A professor in a conference just recently read it to us, and it was um, a very moving story I wanted to share with my students. Then I wanted to know who that anthropologist is. So, it starts like this. An anthropologist proposed a game to children of an African tribe. He put a basket of fruit near a tree and told the kids that the first one to reach the fruit would win them all. When he told them to run, they all took each other's hand and ran together, when set together enjoying the, then set together enjoying the fruit. When asked why they ran like that, as one could have taken all the fruit for oneself, they said, Ubuntu. How can one of us be happy if all the others are sad? Ubuntu is a philosophy of African tribes that can be summed up as I am because we are. I really like the story and I wanted to know who that anthropologist is. And while I was looking, I realized this um, quote also being explained by Desmond Tudor in um, a lot of resources that African, um, I'm sorry, uh, Western anthropologists, it's that American anthropologists, and 
one place it said um, foreign anthropologist, but nobody gave the name. So this could be a, um, a nice myth that by itself Ubuntu is a correct um, term. It, it exists in the African culture. However, the story itself has um, so far I can find any um, any name for that researcher or the anthropologist. Five decisions can you find who, who this anthropologist is? And this is um, another critical thinking question. In this case, it's an information literacy question. How can you find and substantiate information? The next slide, I would like to take you to um, a handout that was given to my son and when he was a second grader. And one of the um, things I did here is then uh, crossed out some of the lines because um, there is um, a little video I wanted to watch before we go on. Let me give you the link. This is a um, video that was, um, <clears throat> actually, let me send you two of them. One, first one is um, a video about the Harvard students who are uh, answering what, uh, how the seasons occur. All right, while um, you're watching, I'm going to put a little question up for you. How the season occurred, if you can type it up, I really appreciate it. You have a handout if you need help uh, or not. Um, I really appreciate why do we have seasons or how the seasons occur. By the way, welcome chi China, China train. Um, I hope, um, hi, I hope, um, um, we have a few more people. Maybe we'll do the math later. Right now, I just jumped into the presentation, so we're recording the session. And if you want to ask questions anytime, put it, put it on the chat. Or uh, later on, if you want to email me your questions, uh, please feel free. This is my email on this one also. All right, did you have a chance to look at the video? There's another link in the sentence that also links to this video related to how the system is All right. So let's go into a zoomed in version of this handout. So I can read it to you how my son responded. My son says um, four seasons occur because the Earth is tilted. When the northern hemisphere faces the sun, it receives more sunlight. Therefore, it is summer. It is um, in the north and winter in the south. Opposite is true and south and so on. This is the right answer. However, when you look at this um, information here that I crossed, unfortunately, it is a misconception to the most of the students whom you are watching in a uh, Harvard video, because here, this is what causes the season. When the Earth is close to the sun, the sun shines longer and brighter. It's not focusing on the fact that it's the tilt of the Earth makes that um, Season, nothing to do with being closer to the sun because when in fact North Hemisphere is closer to the sun, we have uh, winters in the North Hemisphere. So uh, if you keep reading, it says why, this is why the summer is hot when the Earth is far away from the sun. The sun shines for less time, that's why the winter, winter is cold. Uh, during the spring and the fall, the Earth is far away from, so these are um, not the correct answer. The tilting is the correct answer. This extra information actually misleading students to understand. 
The next question I have is the color of the deoxygenated blood. Do you know the color of the oxygen blood? Uh, blood? Do you know the color? I think you and me, China, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, and the next slide is very, um, interesting for me because when my daughter says no, it turns the blue, I said to her, are you sure? Where did you learn this information? So what was your answer, China? You think it's blue or red? Or purple or any other color? Welcome, Betty. We were just asking questions. What's the color of the deoxygenated blood? Let's go with blue. What do you think, um, Betty? Would you like to... Um, I know you should have Googled, but Google may not give you always the right answers. Um, here's a study that they had done, and it's the people. Um, this is with, uh, 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 many research that I found online, somebody said, this is a glimpse into the general opinion on blood color according to 144 answers gathered. They found out that um, most people um, actually said red, 42, 39% said blue, and 19% gave other colors. It says in the um, uh, website, and um, blue, blood is blue inside the body where it is deoxygenated. This is, in fact, a myth because if you wonder why you've seen the blue, the blue blood before, someone might tell that's because, because when you bleed, the blood is oxygenated upon contact with the air, they immediately turn red. So most of the people don't see this in their textbooks. This is um, the color of oxygenated blood versus the oxygenated blood, right? So when my students who are in my math and science class who are um, getting ready to teach um, in the school district the following semester, they are fascinated. They're like, I cannot believe all these years I did not know what the color of oxygenated blood is because in the textbook we see the image of the term the body, and then in order to differentiate, the, the diagram shows um, red and blue blood, right? So in this case, um, it's misleading again unless the students are being told specifically. But when my daughter was eighth grade, her health educator teacher insisted, although my daughter um, and I did the research with her to double check our sources and she insisted, and I told my daughter, drop it, because I don't think she's going to believe you. Um, so we had to drop it at one point. But even if you go, I want you to check with your um, um, nurses that uh, most of them still have this misconception, although they, day and day out, they see the blood um, in the hospital. Or they may be even... Um, uh, extracting blood from you. Another example comes from a wonderful um, book called Hungry Planet. We used the book for a study. Um, we did a, a project with second and third graders and told them um, to look at images in one of the projects, uh, images, and compare how much they spend for uh, grains, how much um, they spend all together, so this is one of the pictures that one group got, and they're comparing this with um, an American family. So the first one is the Chad family, and this is the American, American family. And in the picture, you will see all the food they spend, they eat, during one week. This is their weekly uh, food um, resources. In the American family, you have some foods, but mostly processed foods and meat and pizza and 
um, just in soda. And in the chat family, you see more grains and a um, bottle of water, some herbs, some um, um, beans, I think. And students looked at how much they spend, they compared how much they eat, and the question of they they took they um, told us is how come who eats better and who spends more money? Is the Czech family or an American family? So, um, and they agreed. Um, they said we we think uh, Czech people eat healthier than us. And I, they also asked the question, and they spend less money because they spend one dollar sixty-seven or ninety-seven cents um, for one with food supply. And in America, we spend three hundred times more money. But are we eating healthier? It, these are very um, good ways for the students to understand um, that government um, resources always out there to to give us the basic understanding of what the food groups are, what we should be eating, what balance. We have pyramid models, and recently we got a new model called my plate model. So for the study, we wanted to bring this model to the students. And very interesting, again, um, students in this study, they put a big slump of pizza. They said, here's the, here's the um, grain, here's the tomato, here's the, the dairy on top. So in a sense, they said it's hard to make a place that you can separate it into um, portions. Another student put a um, bowl of soup and said, where is the spoon? How about a chopstick? Because if um, you want to make a plate and put a fork in this model, for instance, it's another misconception that everybody eats with fork. Everybody eats a piece of meat and a piece of bread or or a, piece, a vegetable. So you cannot really um, identify um, global uh, issues through food. Yes, we can. So we did um, uh, recently watch the mystic, mythic journey. We also learned from mythology how most of the stories are being recycled and told um, for us to understand in, um, in this day and age. Another um, uh, book that we looked at uh, is called Beast of Blooming Society and how this um, uh, Author Ivan Illich talked about owning a car and how much you uh, you spend, and not owning a car actually you save a lot of money. And it was an amazing uh, dialogue and discussion because we are uh, living in a society that buy, buy, buy is um, going to make you more happy, more healthy, more accessing all the resources. But um, there are things that need to be understood. In, even in a capitalist system where the consumerism is what we're teaching to the kids, but it's also it's very critical that the students need to understand they need to be the producer of knowledge. So the way that um, my students uh, learn to, to uh, create their lesson plans also having a, pro, a, a, um, a pre production, production, and post production stage so the students not only be able to read, deconstruct media, but they also learn to produce media and um, present and um, share their resources with others. And here are um, some resources that you might be interested in using. Again, one of them is a, um, a wonderful resource um, comes from PBS and Bill Moyer's interview with Joan. Joseph Campbell, um, Myth, um, Misconceptions on Seasons, there's a link, Harvest Seasons, the ones I gave you earlier, The Oxygen is a lot link, and Ubuntu is so, on um, discussion, so you might be interested in checking that out, those things out. And it really takes me into a new um, this discussion we, with my students, uh, discussed where the learning occurs. And 
one of the things um, I have to tell you, every time somebody tells me, oh, I have this epiphany, I um, had the answers when I was in the shower. I don't know how many times I heard this, or you may have experienced it yourself, but what happens is um, people now learn in places that beyond the school walls. So we really need to um, understand that our generation of students are learning sometimes more in their um, room, in their own um, bedroom, than classroom. So that was a discussion that led us into thinking. I mean, it's the same thing with Archimedes, um, invented you know, the buoyancy um, formula uh, when he was in, in shower. For instance, one of the discussions, uh, again, comes from a handout that, was, that has its own grammar um, mistakes. I zoomed into a question for you. It was given um, during the Black History Month to students, and the students were supposed to answer several questions. Without, this is a question that I zoomed in. Um, it says, a black woman sat in the of the bus in Alabama, and one of the one of the questions um, that one of the immediate answer is from. So most of the people that I asked this question, they said from. They throw the bus sat in front of a bus. Then I said, Do you know the picture that you look at on the um, the day after, I'll play the, the screen capture for it. Most of the people think it's front, some says back. Um, I heard a few said window, but nobody says middle or side. So the right answer is she was in the middle. But the reason why we think that way, I think, is because um, when the stories are being told and sometimes simplified for second grade level, uh, that creates problems. For instance, this is a chair that's uh, dedicated in every bus in San Antonio, Texas. And here's me sitting next to that chair, having a picture to share with you today. And one of the things in, in this picture um, shows is that um, it was in the middle of the bus, by the way, the picture that I took. But if you look at this picture, which was a staged picture, I think a couple of weeks after the event, they asked someone to sit in the back, and she was um, looking through the window. So if you look at this picture in textbook, you're going to say, yes, that day she sat in front of a bus. But this wasn't the day that the event occurred. And the real story says um, that she was actually sitting in the area where there's a sign that's colored only. So when all the seats in front of the bus filled, and if you go to the link that's given here, Rosa Parks herself says they move the, the sign one seat back and ask her to move back. So the story is a bit different than she getting on the bus and sitting in front. And again, what are the implications here? Why we are telling stories like this to our students? For my students, when they prepare any lesson plan, they deconstruct and they liberate themselves from the textbook format. Because the textbook always shows a 2D image of, um, like, blood, in this case, the deoxygenated versus oxygenated blood, or a picture of Rosa Parks, a stage image that tell the story different than the, 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 the original story and so on. So let's go back and uh, deconstruct the last li line um, that hand up. And all these things uh, that we do, as this as I do with my students and their uh, findings we, um, we um, generate, all of the things we do is um, we learn from each other because another student of mine a couple of years ago comes and tells me he's um, going to study in Columbia University for the World Masters, and he actually, in fact, found the real Rosa Parks. I said, what? 
this the, the world apart is not the real one. And he further on um, came back and said, the real world apart uh, were much darker skin and much uh, uh, bigger woman that they wanted to take a world apart that um, easier to picture. So, again, go figure. The more you explore, the, the more um, questions or uh, conspiracy theories or myths and misconceptions comes into effect. That's why I'd like to um, uh, ask you to explore a book called My, My Teacher Told Me. This is one of the books that, um, uh, by Dr. Logan um, that inspired me to, to say we need to absolutely uh, explore beyond um, beyond um, textbooks because textbooks are still written by a group of um, editors and there might be some errors or in, in this case for instance even misspelling America's Americans can could not sit or sat in front of a bus so um, so nothing is is uh, set in stone. And I, I tell my students, instead of teaching the facts to the students, teach them the critical thinking skills so that they will question the facts, facts and um, data and um, information. For instance, a nine planet versus eight planet, and Pluto is considered being a dwarf planet, and all these new ideas, even in science, uh, continue to change. So let's look at this last sentence, if you would like, and in this one it says, King helped to change the lives of black Americans in the United States. In 1968, someone killed Martin Luther King Jr. Today, his wife and other black Americans are trying to finish his work. All right, Shana, do you, do you have any comments on reading this last line in the handout? For instance, by looking at this um, first, I asked the question, King helped, they are talking about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., King helped to change the lives of black Americans. What's wrong with this sentence? Why black Americans? Which other, other black Americans? Absolutely. So how about all Americans? Um, so in my opinion, What exactly? Thank you. And the next line, for instance, I want you to question the word killed. Why the word assassination is not used? And the teacher's response usually, but they don't know that word. It's complicated for a second grade. But the word killed is like somebody killed somebody. Okay. But Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated. There is a deep nuance, in my opinion. So while we're simplifying the textbooks for our second graders, we are um, instilling more misconceptions. So I tell my students to make sure you don't wait until fifth grade to talk about JFK's assassination, right? It's, and so, uh, you can start talking about the similar issues. Don't underestimate the second graders. There's so much um, they can understand. And you can find that the last line, other black Americans are trying to finish this work, is another problematic sentence because why other black Americans are trying to finish the work. It's all of us. We are still working to get the civil rights movement. That's another misconception because when we talk about civil rights movement, we only talk about getting the bus, right? Okay, now everybody got the bus. So that means we all three no civil rights issues in the country, right? And that is another um, misconception uh, because getting the bus is not, by the way, all the public um, buses here, they don't run on time. In New Jersey, we our train systems are all um, slow and um, reliable, especially after Sandy. So to tell you should be on the, oh, sorry about that. Thank you so much for um, uh, alerting me. Can you hear me now? Maybe I was away from the mic. Is that better? Thank you. Thank you so much. So in this case, um, 
um, if we can relook at the issue one more time, what is it that we are going to teach? So my students and I decided we don't want to teach facts. We want to teach critical thinking so they can explore the facts. They become the producers of knowledge. Here's a little exercise we can do. Can you look at this um, alphabet branding and tell me what O stands for? Or M. Or, okay. My first question is, P is for pets. That's perfect. Uh, where are you from? Okay, so Canadians, your, your excuse, if you don't know these, these are mostly American brands. Maybe it's also sold in Canada, but just in case, if it's not there. Yep, Lysol sounds good. O is for Oreo. Let me give you a little cheat sheet. A for, E for Ego Waffles. So when I ask this question, usually 80% um, of the answers are correct. Students easily answer this question. And when you ask them questions about who these people are, and again, as a Canadian, you're excused, um, these are our uh, Chief Justices, uh, Supreme Court Justices in one end, and then Lord of the Ring in the other. So the question of the day is, try to find out Lord of the Rings um, and then um, Supreme Court Justices. Um, and it's very interesting how it's really easy to answer the questions about who's Frodo, who's Gandalf. It wasn't uh, difficult for them, but by looking at the images of, of Supreme Court leaders they had they had never seen or talked or um, um, found out the latest Supreme Court issues. And here's a question I asked the students. Now, that's not surprising. That was exactly what, how I feel. But again, my role is to get these as teacher can, working with teacher candidates, as a teacher educator myself. We have our, um, all these myths and misconceptions. And it's going to continue to uh, have, have them because learning is also learning. Um, and that's why on learning is necessary sometimes to be able to get the real wisdom. However, sometimes you need to make it fun and interesting. And I received an innovation award um, several years ago from Turning uh, Technologies because I, I was one of the pilot uh, projects uh, in my university doing um, clickers. And I was given the task to teach Supreme Court. Well, my colleagues um, said, how did you um, end up teaching it so you made it? Um, very exciting for the students. And here's one of the uh, exercises. I just updated the names because when I did it, all the names were different. We had at least four new um, uh, justices since then. And here, but the answer did not change because the person is, um, is still there who said this quote. In a big family, the first child is kind of like the first pancake. If it's not perfect, that's okay. There are a lot more coming along. And I asked which current justice said the following. And it's supposed to be their click of the answer. And they didn't even know who these people are. But if anybody needs a um, little um, a hint, and I said yes. And my hint was this person has nine children. Uh, again, you, you excuse, you don't have to know, but if you happen to know, you can tell us, tell us in the chat box. That's okay. The answer is Antonin Scoria. Uh, this um, made the students um, interested and um, developed afterwards because um, Supreme Court justices are not the people uh, who are out of this world or someone that uh, more better and smarter than you are. Someone out there who happened to be chosen to be in that position. That's why we 
we do not want to take our democracy for granted. We have to, to continue to um, fight for our um, freedom, fight for our democracy. So I needed to tell the students it starts with educating yourself and start voting. And we also discussed in the past, for instance, um, how New Jersey, believe it or not, had voting rights um, prior to uh, any other state because they never officially said women cannot work. But in 19, I mean, I'm sorry, 1800, they wanted women to go to voting polls, and here is a cartoon they try to encourage women. By just looking at this picture, do you think that they could be encouraged? This is a website that actually uh, by Rutgers University designed to integrate old um, pictures into teaching. And again, using a resource like this where it's open source, where it could be um, integrated into a textbook is uh, way better than getting a textbook that has um, uh, limited information. But I'm not saying you don't want to use textbooks. So amazing interactive Facebooks out there. However, it's uh, not the only way. I walk. Let me try to get to it. One second. It's a very huge link, right? And I think I'm going to uh, search it and post it for you. One second. Give me a little second. What was that is uh, a university in New Jersey. Okay, so I can get the link right away. Let me double check one thing. Okay. It says SCC about the study people. That's the problem. Very interesting. It's um either the link is um updated, but if you can give me your email, I can send it to you. Okay, I found it. Okay. This is one of the links that's going to get you there. Oh, it says there's an error. No. We're not going to despair. I'm actually going to send you a better link with help. There is more teacher resources, and I'm going to send you the direct link if you give me your email address, please. Thank you. I'm going to copy your email address. So yahoo.ca means, um, Canada. That's wonderful. Okay. Apologies. Let's continue recording the session. And I'll get back to your question. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, thank you. And this was a question I asked, and I'm surprised that everybody thought India is the country with um, more uh, parliamentary reserve fees for women, because we always hear India has the biggest economy, in, in, sorry, biggest uh, democracy. But the answer was Afghani, and they were quite surprised. So most of the information, again, we learn through our media is actually misconceptions. And there is a book that, if you're interested, you might be interested in reading. Um, uh, the more you watch, the less you know. This is an amazing experience for me because if you watch too much television, you think that you're being informed, but you're actually being informed by um, same things over and over and muffled by misconception. And here's an ad um, that was banned in. South America. So I showed the students to um, look at this ad first for a couple of seconds. 
um, it's only the 30 second ad, and I ask them which one they sell. What is they, what, what is the, the product? It's a Shakira dancing, um, it's clearly Pepsi commercial, right? But if you, um, watch the ad in entirety and pause in certain, uh, sections, you will see, in fact, they are, um, um, let's get to that end. I think it would be interesting. Um, one second. Let me get you the direct link. Okay. If you look at the ad, um, at the very beginning of the uh, shot, yes. All right. You can easily tell your husband they never sell the obvious product because the goal of the media is first to make you feel that you need their product. In order to need their product, in Canada, for instance, one of the ads that inspired me to talk many, many times with my students is called I Am Canadian. You probably remember. Sorry. And you probably remember the I Am Canadian ad, um, I think around 2000, it's almost like a, a 15 year old ad. And in that ad, they were clearly selling Canadian na nationalism. So sometimes you sh sell nationalism, sometimes you sell multiculturalism, sometimes you sell uh, beauty, youth. Um, but the, the ad that you're looking at right now, it um, uh, sells everything. And students say, but I don't see God. Where is God in this ad? I want you to look at the um, screenshot. Um, I mean, oops, my screenshot didn't make it to the slideshow here. I want you to look at um, the first uh, two seconds of the ad where you see Shakira is in front of um, um, It's like a church-like place. And, it, and the um, Pepsi icon is idolized, and the stage looks like um, a cross sign with a, a Holy Spirit. So this ad, when it was aired in South America, was considered, how come you're, you're putting uh, Pepsi like a godlike uh, stuff to be worshipped? And it, it was clearly selling um, people's religious ideology later on. This ad appeared on YouTube, so I try to share with you. Did you have a chance to scan that screen uh, where at the very, very beginning where the stage looks like a um, cross sign? Okay. I have many, many, many more um, ads and resources like that because if you go to the next um, um, slide, for instance, what do they have in common? When you put the pictures of people, a bunch of people, and people look at Shakira, this is um, one of the famous um, uh, people around, like one of the, the Ross Nader is here, uh, Salma Hayek, and one of the things uh, you find out even Krista Makofli, the um, um, teacher who was in the Challenger when the rocket is exploded. So all these famous people, you know, Bomber and Apollo Abdul and so on, and they are Arab Americans. And most of the time, people think Arab Americans are all Muslims, but Arab Americans can be Jewish, can be Christian as well. So there's so many misconceptions we learn when you watch too much uh, television or you watch one type of media. And Disney, for instance, when brought its stories from Middle East, a lot of the things you see, it's all about barbarians and uh, chopping hands. Um, so a lot of the story is being distorted in different ways. And that's, um, there is another one that I would like to um, share with you. My students uh, created a wonderful uh, multi-cultural uh, project called Cinderella Stories from China. Nation is a similar story. 
But when I ask the student, okay, let's uh, look at the little clip, the clip from this uh, CBS uh, story break, all the good characters more Europeanized, they speak more, much better English. Then the stepmother and stepsister, all the bad people, had more crooked eyes and they spoke English with a heavy Chinese accent. So the question is, how, you can't just look at the picture because it's also the sound that tells the new story. So the students um, learn misconception again to the sound. And it was deconstructed in a documentary uh, how the hyena's voices are given African American children, none of them was Whoopi Goldberg. And that alerted me to think, uh, and you might be interested in watching this video, um, it's also available online, it's called Mickey Mouse Monopoly by Media Education Foundation, and they deconstruct um, Disney from uh, multiple angles. Multimedia certainly engaged the kids, however, sometimes these engagements may lead into uh, multiple myths and misconceptions or even hatred towards the nation because if you remember uh, Jab, Jab, it's called Japanese, Japanese Americans were in, um, con uh, in, um, in training camps uh, during World War II because they are depicted on the media and one of them uh, one of the cartoonists, very famous cartoonists, is Dr. Seuss, who depicted them, and later on became a children's author. We know him as a children's author, but he was one of the first cartoonists who uh, depicted Japanese as um, evil characters. So, as my time is going up, I have misconceptions about maps, how maps are being distorted and told different stories. I have um, images. Um, uh, in my presentation, but let's conclude with a um, nice quote from Umbo Kureko. He said, a democratic civilization will save itself only if it makes the language of the image into a stimulus for critical reflection. <laughs> Because teaching is um, not just providing the facts and asking the students to the remembering questions, but also asking them to asking the students to reflect and make new meanings and produce knowledge uh, instead of becoming consumers. Thank you so much for uh, attending the session, and thank you um, for listening to this session. Please, if you have any questions, and I will be emailing you, um, Shana, um, any questions, um, email me on, um, let me put the first page up, on my full bite email, salda.yildiz at fullbytemail.org. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. Hello. Um, I'm going to add um, a few more slides into uh, the presentation um, where I have some more uh, time to record. Teacher's role. This is a quote that I would like to um, elaborate and show you several samples and exercises for my students. Paulo Freire, a um, Brazilian multicultural educator, said, Education must begin with the student, excuse me, begin with the solution of the teacher-student contradiction by reconciling the cause of the contradiction so that both are simultaneously teachers and students. The this quote, I started to um, see that my students um, are my uh, teachers, they're going to be future teachers, so I started to see them as my collaborators, my future um, colleagues. And um, one of the uh, projects I had done with my daughter in um, 2005, I just want to put a little slide up for you, is Fun Facts, Turkey, the country 
not the bird. And this was an amazing um, experience for me because uh, when my daughter volunteered my name, we're going to do multicultural day, and I shared and laid around this with my students, and they learned a lot um, about working with me, getting this slide. Where is Turkey? And we had an interactive slide presentation. Um, people click on the page, and then if it's wrong, it puts a sad face. That was an interactive uh, slide we created. Later on, it zooms in and shows where Turkey is located on the map, shows the map, um, so it shows a flag, zooms into the picture. So it was an interactive presentation. And that um, led me into finding out we are the size of Texas. Um, and then um, uh, my students said, oh, Turkey is a, uh, quite a, a big country, but not as big as the United States. Then students who are in New Jersey, we um, have another slide which doesn't make it yet. They make it 33 New Jersey. So they calculated to find out it makes 33 New Jersey. So that's the equal uh, size of Turkey. We also have a, a project on uh, semiotics, con construction of meaning. And every time anybody looks at a sign, a net or any um, uh, product and um, advertising, you will see that depending on your experience, time and error, context or place, there is a new meaning is come constructed every time. So with my students, um, we found out different signs. For instance, by looking at this we sign, what does that mean? I um, <clears throat> I also want to show you, it could be victory if you lived in a Churchill era. It could be peace if you lived in um, hippie era, I guess. Um, so depending on um, the situation, it could be give me to aspirin, or it could be a um, um, sign, um, uh, be sign in um, American um, sign language. Or in this case, this is not okay. If you lived in um, a country, this means money in Japan. I also would like to um, share with you a colleague of mine one day comes and says, I sent this information to registrar and they told me nothing came. But I know I sent an email. And the email had a line next to it that says zero kilobyte. And she assured me, if you look at my web um, and my email, it said OK. I know it said OK. When she was looking at OK, she was actually seeing zero K. And it's interesting how sometimes um, not being familiar with internet or at that time the email system, uh, that professor was quite puzzled. So, Money in Japan, it could be uh, sex in Mexico, homosexuality in Ethiopia, uh, obscenity in Brazil, zero in southern France. So there are different meanings in different countries. When we get this kind of realization that everyone looks at the same picture, and this is a study I read called um, Learning Through Pictures, and the researcher James Mangan with pictures of different um, um, interpretation of bears, one of them was a sketch image of a bear. So it's a um, black and white um, image. And when uh, he showed it to tribes in um, Africa, people look at the image and they didn't understand um, that it looked like a bear. And the same thing happened to me when I looked at the picture. Uh, this is the third picture here. It's a Crimson Tribe bear uh, uh, picture, so a bear um, uh, pole. And does that look like a bear for people who are not in this tribe? But from that tribe, that's the depiction. Again, depending on the era, depending on um, your experience and the image you're looking at makes different meanings. 
Um, one of the one of my colleagues wanted to put Queen Margot movie, and by mistake I got a wrong version. And at that time, she um, told me, "Oh, you're absolutely right. This is an uh, um, um, character that uh, is mythologized, and this person has different kinds of images in different eras. So you can see." In earlier uh, images, um, she has thin lips, then she has thick lips, she has uh, black hair, she has red hair. So, again, o over the centuries, um, the explanation of the beauty changes. So, again, who is the most beautiful? At one era, a woman who had more um, flesh, more. Um, uh, bigger look, more appreciated, and now on um, the media, we are looking at very, very um, um, slim models. So, what does an ed semiotic self to us in the classroom? It breaks down the messages into uh, little pieces, so we will be able to deconstruct and see the images. We look for patterns across different um, forms and communication. We actually uh, understand how cultural and social conventions relate to communication we, uh, we create and consume, and it helps us go beyond the obvious. And um, commutation test is something that I really enjoy looking. And in the commutation test, what you do is that every time you see an image, you try to put another um, image into it to be able to reread the image. If the image is color image, can you make it black and white to look at it? Or looking at this corporate flag, for instance, how the stars turn into an um, icon of um, a symbol of a brand. What does that mean? And how it's being interpreted? And um, there's a blog run from edbusters.org right after September 11th. When the, the flag was up, people were talking how this is um, consume, consumerism is necessary for America, and what they're doing is wrong. They should take this ad up. So depending on the era, again, this flag means different things to different people. And people were, um, as I recall in the flag, discussing how we do not uh, um, elect presidents. We are selecting presidents who are selected by the corporation. Um, this is um, a discussion that um, my students uh, ran on a project called uh, Historical Photo Lesson. If you go to um, Library of Congress, they have pictures of all the um, American history pictures. And one of them is the Gettysburg picture. And the images on the top is um, deconstructed by the images at the bottom. So for instance, the body of one is body of one in the second picture. And one of the things I found out is that same um, dead bodies on the, the field, but um, photographer took two different angles and sold the stories to two different people. Northerners winning the war, Southerners winning the war, but in the end, both parties, uh, all Americans were dying on the, the field. So this kind of analysis is done in the classroom, teaches the students more critical thinking skills. Um, okay, um, think critical thinking skills than um, just learning the facts and. Um, data in statistics um, given in a textbook. So thank you so much for um, listening to the extension of this presentation. And um, I really appreciate uh, for your time. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day.